In this video lecture, I am going to explain how to use Macaulay's method to determine the deflection in a simply supported beam with an example problem. Before moving on to solving the problem, let me give an overview about what is Macaulay's method and how it works. It's a simple method which works based on the double integration concept in which the bending moment is given by the equation ei t square y by dx square. In this method, bending moment at any section x is determined in a systematic order. The section x should be taken either in the first or the last portion of the beam. The slope dy by dx is obtained by integrating the bending moment equation. That means the integrating the bending moment equation, we can get the slope value. Again, by integrating this slope equation, we can get the deflection of beam. So, again, if you integrate this equation, we are going to get the deflection value. That is why we say that it works based on the double integration concept. Now, let us solve the problem. If we read the problem, a beam of length 6 meter is simply supported at its ends and carries two point loads of 48 kN and 45 kN at a distance of 1 meter and 3 meter respectively from left support. Determine the deflection under each load. Consider the Young's modulus as 2 multiplied by 10 to the power 5 Newton per mm square and the moment of inertia value was 85 multiplied by 10 to the power 6 millimeter power 4. First, let us construct the given system. We have two point load 48 kN and 40 kN which are located at a distance of 1 meter and 3 meter from the left support. The entire length of the beam is 6 meter. It is simply supported. To construct a free body diagram, we must know the value of reaction force at A and reaction force at B. At A, we have a reaction force which is Ra and at B, we have a reaction force Rb. Now, let us find out the reaction forces at A and B. For that, we need to apply the equilibrium concept. That is, sigma Fy is equal to 0. That means the net forces which are acting in the vertical direction is equal to 0. So, Ra plus Rb that means the net forces which are acting in the upward direction which is equal to 48 plus 40 and these two are the point loads which are acting in the downwards direction. Ra plus Rb is equal to 88 and then we will apply the next equilibrium condition that is moment about any point is equal to 0. Here we take moment about A is equal to 0. So, the first force which creates the moment about A is Rb. Rb multiplied by the distance between AB which is 6 meter. It creates a counterclockwise moment. It creates a counterclockwise moment about A. So, we put positive sign here. The next moment is created by this point load 40 kN about point A. It creates clockwise moment about A. So, we put minus sign here 40 multiplied by the distance between A and D which is 3. So, 40 multiplied by 3. The next moment is created by this point load 48 kN about point A which is 48 multiplied by 1 meter which is equal to 0. By solving this equation, we can find the value of Rb which is equal to 28 kN. After substituting this Rb value in this equation, we can get the value of Ra which is equal to 60 kN. Now, we have calculated the reaction forces at A and B. Now, the free body diagram is complete. Now, let us see how to apply the Macaulay's method to find out the deflection in the simply supported beam. So, this is the free body diagram and here the position of C and D are referred from the right support B. So, this distance AC is 1 meter, the entire beam length is 6 meter. So, 
this length that is C to B measures 5 meter. Similarly, A to D it is given as 3 meter. So, the remaining length is 3 meter that is D to B. Now, we are going to consider a section X in the first part of the beam that is the section AC which is located at a distance of X from the right support B. It is the first step in Macaulay's method. Now, we have to find out the distance of force at C and D with respect to this section X. So, this distance is going to be X minus 3 meter because the total distance is X and this distance is 3 meter. So, it is going to be X minus 3 meter and this distance is X minus 5 meter. Now, let us calculate the moment about this section X. So, according to Macaulay's method, we represent the bending moment as Ei d square y by dx square which is equal to the moment about x. So, the moment about x is found by using the moments which are created by the reaction force and these two point loads. First, this moment is created by this force multiplied by this distance. So, it creates a counterclockwise moment. So, we put positive here. So, 28 multiplied by the distance x. And the next moment is created by this force that is 40 kN. So, it is going to be 40 multiplied by x minus 3 minus because this force is going to create a clockwise moment about this section x. So, it is going to be minus and 48 multiplied by x minus 5. So, this is the bending moment about x and which is equal to Ei d square y by dx square. So, we have consider some partition here to separate the section in the beam. So, this 28x refers this section. We have considered this section as 1 and the next section is CD. So, it is going to be the second section and the next one is this AC. So, this is going to be the third section and the corresponding moment value is given here. So, this representation will help us to find out the deflection at individual sections. Now, we are going to integrate this equation with respect to x to get the value of slope. So, by integrating this one, we are going to get this value that is ei dy by dx is equal to 28 x square by 2 plus c1 which is integration constant minus 40 x minus 3 the whole power 2 divided by 2 minus 48 x minus 5 whole power 2 divided by 2. So, here also we can consider this partition that is 1, 2 and 3. Now, let us simplify the equation it is 14 and it is 20 and it is 24. Now, let us write the simplified equation that is 14 x square plus c1 minus 20 x minus 3 the whole power 2 minus 24 x minus 5 the whole power 2. Here also we consider this partition 1, 2, 3 to represent the individual section in the beam. So, this equation is considered as equation number 1. Now, we are going to integrate this equation to get the deflection equation. So, by integrating that above equation, we get Ei y which is equal to 14 x cube divided by 3 plus c1 x plus c2. So, it is the second integration. So, we get in another constant which is called as c2 minus 20 x minus 3 the whole power 3 divided by 3 minus 24 x minus 5 the whole power 3 divided by 3. Let us simplify this equation which is 1 this is 8. So, the other term we will keep as it is ok. So, it is going to be 14 divided by 3 x cube plus c1 x plus c2 minus 20 divided by 3 
multiplied by x minus 3 whole power 3 minus 8 x minus 5 the whole power 3. Here also we have to consider this partition and this equation is referred as equation number 2. So, we are going to use this equation to calculate the deflection at individual section and for that we need to calculate these two integration constants that is C1 and C2. To find out the value of C1, C2, we need to apply the boundary condition. Now, we are going to see how to find the boundary conditions which are required to find out the C1 and C2. For that, uh, we need to consider this beam. Here, if I put x is equal to 0, I am going to be here at the right support. If I put x is equal to 0, so when x is equal to 0, the deflection value is equal to 0. The reason is, at point B, we have a simply support. So, when x is equal to 0, there is no deflection at this point. Since it is simply supported, there is no motion along y direction. So, the deflection value is going to be 0. Similarly, if I consider this point, the x is equal to 6 meter, I will be getting this point. So, when x is equal to 6 meter, again the y value is going to be 0 because this end A is also simply supported. So, when x is equal to 6 meter, y is equal to 0. So, these two are all the boundary conditions. The first one is x equal to 0, y is equal to 0. This is boundary condition 1. And the second boundary condition is x is equal to 6 meter and y is equal to 0. We are going to apply these boundary conditions to find out the C1 and C2. That is x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. And the second one is when x is equal to 6, y is equal to 0. First, let us apply the boundary condition 1 in equation number 2. So, by substituting x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0, this term becomes 0 and this term also 0, this term also 0 and C2 is there and this term is going to be 20 by 3, 0 minus 3 the whole power 3 minus 8, 0 minus 5 the whole power 3. Now, we are going to find out whether these two parts are needed or not. So, we have to be very careful about that because if any negative value is present within this bracket, we should not consider that section. The reason is when x is equal to 0, it is corresponding to the first part of the equation because here in the diagram, you can see that when x is equal to 0, it lies in the point B. So, it represents the first section. So, we need to consider only the first portion. So, the remaining two portion we should not consider or otherwise we can remember like this, if you get any negative value within this bracket, we should not consider that part. So, the second part and the third part should not be considered because x is equal to 0 which is only corresponding to this first part of the equation. So, we should not consider these two. Now, by simplifying this equation, we get C2 is equal to 0. And the next boundary condition is when x is equal to 6 meter, y is 0. We are going to substitute this boundary condition in equation number 2 and we get the y value is 0 and x value is substituted as 6. So, here we need to consider the all the part of the equation. The reason is within the bracket, we do not get any negative value. And technically, when x is equal to 6 meter, it represents the entire length. So, we need to consider the entire part of the equation. First part, second part as well as the third part of the equation. So, we need to consider the entire part of the equation when x is equal to 6 meter. So, by simplifying this equation, we got C1 as minus 136.60. Now, we have calculated the constants C1 and C2. Let us substitute those values in equation number 2. C2 is 0, so we do not consider that term. So, here also we consider that 3 partition 1, 2 and 3 which represents different section of the beam. This equation we represent that as equation number 3. 
Now the deflection equation is ready to calculate the deflection at any point on the beam. Now we are going to calculate the deflection at D and deflection at C. In order to find out the deflection at D, we need to substitute x is equal to 3 meter. So in the equation number 3, we need to substitute x is equal to 3 meter to find out the deflection at this point D. And if you want to find out the deflection at C, in equation number 3, we need to substitute x is equal to 5 meter. First, let us find out the deflection at D. To find out the deflection, we need to substitute x is equal to 3 meter in the equation number 3. So, by substituting this value, we got EI y which is equal to 14 by 3 into 3 power 3 minus 136.67 multiplied by 3. Here, we have applied the first part of the equation. The reason is x is equal to 3 meter. When x is equal to 3 meter, it lies in the first part of the beam. So, we need to consider the first part of the equation. So, if we have considered the first part of the equation as x equal to 3 meter lies in the first part of the beam. Even if you substitute this value 3 here, it becomes 0 and this term becomes negative within this bracket. So, we need to ignore these two terms. By solving this terms, we can get minus 2 84 kilonewton meter cube. Since we have integrated this term two times, we got this term as meter cube. So the entire system represents in kilonewton meter cube. We need to convert this term into newton mm power 3. The reason is the Young's modulus value is given in newton per millimeter square and I value is given in millimeter power 4. So we need to convert this term into Newton millimeter power 4. So which is equal to minus 284 into 10 to the power 12 Newton millimeter power 3. This term is obtained by converting kilonewton into Newton that is into 10 to the power 3 multiplied by converting this meter into millimeter. So 10 power 3 the whole power 3. So totally we got 10 to the power 12. After converting this unit into Newton millimeter power 3, we can substitute this value of E and I here. So, we got the Y value was minus 16.7 mm. This minus sign indicates the deflection happens below the baseline. After substituting X is equal to 3 meter, we got that deflection at point D as 16.7 mm. Now let us calculate the deflection at C. So if you want to find out the deflection at C, we need to substitute x is equal to 5 meter in the equation 3. And here we have to consider only the first two part of the equation. Because when you find out the deflection at C, the x is going to be 5 meter. It lies in the second part of the beam. So we need to consider the first two part of the beam to find out the deflection at C. So EIY which is equal to 14 by 3 multiplied by 5 power 3 minus 136.67 multiplied by 5 and this is the second term minus 20 divided by 3 5 minus 3 the whole power 3. Even if you apply the 3 here this third term becomes negative. So we have to ignore this term. So, by substituting the x in the equation number 3, we got the value was minus 153.35 kilonewton meter cube. So, we need to convert this kilonewton meter cube into newton mm power 3. So, that we can apply the value of E and I here. So, y is going to be minus 153.35 into 10 to the power 12 divided by 2 multiplied by 10 to the power 5 multiplied by 85 into 10 to the power 6. So, the y value is minus 9.02 m. Here also, we got the negative sign because the deflection happened below the baseline. The deflection at C is 9.02 m. Thank you for watching.